time was right. The biggest boom in American business, 1929. And the location was perfect. Right on the spot, John Jacob Astor built his own mansion in the early 1800s. And just where the Astors, many years later, put up the best hotel in New York, the old Waldorf Astoria, where all the greats in society, the 400 met and dined and danced for more than 35 years. So, when the Astors opened their new Waldorf uptown and put the old place and land up for sale, we formed a group to buy that property and build an office structure suitable for housing the greatest business enterprises in our nation and the world. We called this building the Empire State and named as its first president the four times governor of New York, Alfred E. Smith. I called in our architect, Bill Lamb, and said, Bill, how high can you make it so that it won't fall down? The Empire State would be 80 stories high, the world's tallest building. But I reckoned without Walter Chrysler, his men had secretly assembled a spire inside the Chrysler building. And at the very last moment, they shot it up through the dome, making it the tallest structure in the world. So I told our architects, our building needs a hat. And by December of 29, I had a surprise of my own an idea that would ignite the public's imagination and bring business to the area. Our hat would be a 200-foot mast to more dirigibles, the airships of the future. Our new height, 1,250 feet into the sky, without question, we would be the tallest. Excavation began on January 22nd, 1930, and Al Smith, an Irishman, ordered the steel to start going up on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Working furiously, our men set records that have never been equal. In one 10-day period, our building jumped 14 floors, steel, stone, concrete, and all. The entire project completed in the incredible time of one year and 45 days. On the 1st of May, 1931, as President Hoover pushed the button that illuminated our tower, we opened our doors to the public. 102 stories, 1,250 feet, the tallest structure in the history of mankind, the finest example of the skyscraper, never to be equaled in elegance the symbol of New York and the United States to all the world. From everywhere they come, 16,000 people work here every day, 35,000 visit, more than 1,500,000 people a year. Through four-story portals, enter a lobby of marble, ceiling high marbles from Germany, Belgium, Italy, and France. Step into one of the 73 automatic elevators that can take you past the offices of more than 900 tenants from six continents. Travel aloft at a speed of 1,200 feet per minute to reach the 80th floor in just 60 seconds. Then another elevator, 
to the observatory deck on the 86th floor and look on the greatest city in the world and the symbols of man's greatest accomplishments and aspirations. Continue up to the 102nd floor observatory and begin a full circle view of New York City and its many landmarks. To the west, the cliffs of New Jersey look down on the Hudson River, whose deep waters carry ships of all size and purpose. Further up the Hudson, along the Palisades, to the George Washington Bridge, completed the same year as the Empire State Building. This lighthouse is known to children everywhere. From our vantage point in the center of New York City, we look on a landscape of tall buildings. Just uptown, you'll find Rockefeller Center, with a rink to skate and a promenade to stroll. Uptown a little further, on some of the most valuable real estate in the world, is Central Park. Crossing Fifth Avenue and moving east, we can see St. Patrick's Cathedral, long a New York City landmark. The Pan Am Building towers over Grand Central Terminal. The Chrysler Building, a proud 77 stories. Further to the north, the Triborough Bridge connects Manhattan, the Bronx, and Queens. You may have flown to New York and arrived at John F. Kennedy International Airport. On the east side of town, you can visit the United Nations. Looking south down the East River is perhaps New York's most famous bridge, the Brooklyn Bridge. Across the bridge is Brooklyn Heights, now an historical area whose townhouses were once home to sea captains and their families. Newest among the magnificent bridges is the high-arching Verrazano. It spans the entrance to New York Harbor. Straight south from the observatory is the financial district, whose daily pulsations are heard around the world. Swinging west, across the narrow southern tip of Manhattan, we view the twin towers of the World Trade Center. It's 30 minutes from Manhattan to Staten Island by ferry, and you can go round trip for a dime. The ferry passes right by New York Harbor's most famous landmark. Our view from the Empire State's highest observatory has now come full circle. And it's time for lunch. Everything from haute cuisine at the exclusive Empire State Club to the pleasures of the sausage and other culinary delights. And a time to shop, only a short walk from the building in the greatest shopping district in the world. At the center of it all, a building soaring upward on the wings of eagles. Atop its massive base, a single tower soars more than 1,000 feet. And the mast, originally to hold airships, now houses a master antenna that broadcasts FM radio. Television programs are beamed to the people of four states from a 22-story, 60-ton master antenna that reaches skyward to 1,472 feet. And it is evening. 
Another day slipping into the past. Memories and souvenirs. Do you remember the most famous visitor to the Empire State? And it is night, and the action starts in Empire State's riverboat. City at night, seen from Empire State's observatory, presents a dazzling sight. Nearby is Madison Square Garden, and just uptown, the Lincoln Center of Performing Arts. The city that never sleeps. The city of eternal possibility. set out to build the world's tallest structure, to house the greatest businesses and industry. But what I think we achieved is an enduring monument to the soaring spirit of man. Mm -hmm. 